WFCA's Faith in Sports. I'm Chris Schneider. Welcome to the DFW Fellowship of Christian Athletes weekly radio show, Faith in Sports, brought to you by the JSGC, the Jim Sunberg Golf Classic. Sonny will be joined by fellow Ranger greats Pudge Rodriguez, Tom Grieve, and Mark McLemore for a great luncheon and day of golf. Go to dfwfca.org for all the details of the Jim Sunberg Golf Classic. Major League Baseball has the Fall Classic. College Baseball has the College World Series. The CWS got underway this weekend in Omaha with the final eight teams left standing for a national championship. Coach Jim Slosnagel has his TCU team there for the third straight year. Coach Sloss will join us today to talk not only about college baseball, but about his walk with Christ. I'm involved in the FCA here at TCU. I try and have daily time in prayer and scripture, uh, whether it be in the morning, usually, or sometimes in the in the late evening. And that's, uh, you know, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. And, and I, I just, I think that applies to a lot of things for me. More from TCU baseball coach Jim Slosnagel coming right up. Our DFW FCA 50th anniversary classic moment this week comes from a man who needs no introduction, Coach Lou Holtz. You just have to have a daily walk with the Lord. I think you got to be able to find time to sit down and thank the good Lord and listen to Him or what you're willing to go. And I think if you read the Bible, it would tell you exactly how to live, etc. Uh, my wife and I go to church every single Sunday. We go to breakfast after that. I, I just think God has been a very important part in our life, and the most important thing has become a very important part in our children's life as well. More from the great Lou Holtz in the classic moment in just a few minutes. Also joining us on the show today, DFWFCA Southeast Area Director and Camp Director, Danny Noah. He just wrapped up an amazing camp with the Dallas Independent School District student-athletes. We actually presented the gospel with an opportunity to respond and had uh, close to 50 students uh, right there at the 50-yard line uh, of Sprague Stadium uh, give their hearts to Jesus Christ, able to put some information in their hands of how to walk with Christ, uh, how to live for Him, and, and stay connected with FCA. More from DFWFCA's camp director, Danny Noah, later this half hour. Hey coaches, FCA has something special coming up just for you. This is greatness. It's the Coaches Enrichment Camp. It'll be held July 7th through the 10th at La Toretta Lake Resort and Spa. It is open to all Texas coaches, married or single, always a great time and some of the greatest coaches of all time have taken part in these guys like tom landry and tom osborne and bobby bowden and lou holes you don't have to be a football coach you can be baseball volleyball swimming whatever just uh take part it'll be good for you uh, just go to dfwfca.org to get all the details now our special guest today might be someone you're familiar with if you live in north texas One of the top college baseball teams in the country for the last several years has been TCU. The Horned Frogs have gone to four College World Series in six years. The Frogs are there in Omaha for the CWS again right now, actually. In just 13 seasons, Coach Jim Slosnagel has become the winningest coach in TCU baseball history. He was named the National Coach of the Year in 2010. He has won eight Conference Coach of the Year awards. Coach Sloss, thank you so much for joining us here on Facebook in sports today. Congratulations, by the way, of getting there to Omaha for the College World Series. Now, you were a pitcher on an Elon team, the Elon Fighting Christians, that played for an NAIA national championship. Just how good of a pitcher were you? <laughs> I was a team member. I don't, I don't know <laughs> if I was much beyond that. Uh, I was good enough to, I guess, walk and go come from a really small uh, 1A high school in uh, in Western Maryland and, and and walk on one of the best NAIA baseball programs at that time. But I, yeah, my my playing career wasn't was pretty much over uh, within a year or two of, of entering college, and and that's when I started my college coach pulled me to the side and said I think you'd make a pretty good coach and I was a journalism major at the time and switched my major to education and, and off I went. Wow he could spot the talent uh, early on so as a pitcher what was your strength were you a fastball or curveball or knuckleball what, what was your strength? I think my strength was I, was I had I could really field my position and I had a good pickoff move because there was always balls getting hit back at me <laughs> and uh 
and there was always guys on base. But I don't know. No, I mean, I threw strikes. I, you know, I could throw, you know, my breaking ball behind in the count and do different things like that. But my playing career was uh, pretty limited to, uh, you know, my success prior to college, to be honest with you. I had never heard, and I don't know why, but I'd never heard Elon called the Fighting Christians before. Uh, where did that come from? Well, they've always been the Fighting Christians until about the last, uh, I want to say about 50, 10 or 15 years ago, they changed their, uh, I don't know if it was become somewhat politically correct, or I, I don't really know. I'm not real fired up about it, but now they're called the Phoenix. But, uh, yeah, we were the fighting Christians when I was there. They always had been the fighting Christians. We, our little mascot kind of looked like the, the Notre Dame guy. <laughs> um, no, I enjoyed my time there. It's a great place, a uh, really special part of the country for me, and the Piedmont Triangle of of central north carolina and and my brother ended up going to school there and uh home is home but you know elon and in, in this in the middle part of the state of the carolinas is uh is special to me i bet that's a beautiful area there so basically you went straight from playing in 89 to coaching in 90 uh because uh, one of your coaches saw this talent in you did you want to be a coach before that or is this just kind of something that he planted in your mind uh really he, he you know he planted it in my mind I, I don't remember thinking about being a coach i've always uh, been more of a cerebral guy so i i, I remember taking a coach-like approach to to games and I was, I've always been somewhat more mature uh, than my age, even as a young teenager. So I think you saw some of those things, and and uh, but but I had never really thought about it at that time. All I ever wanted to do was be a sports writer and write for Sports Illustrated, and uh, you know he changed my mind on that. Sure glad he did, and you know went you know all in into the coaching thing, even as a student assistant at Elon. Uh, worked you know worked there, uh, worked all summer, every summer at different baseball camps all across the eastern seaboard at places like clemson and georgia tech and georgia southern and elon and, and uh you know that allowed me to meet some people and and uh the summer after my senior year uh, you know there were some big changes in the ncaa and they were bad for a lot of people but they were actually really good for me it gave me a chance to become the volunteer coach at uh, clemson university and and off i went you know really really enjoyed my time there and that kind of spearheaded me into the, the rest of my career. We are talking with TCU baseball coach Jim Sloss Nagel Moore with Coach Sloss coming up in just a couple of minutes. And later in the show, we will get our 50th anniversary classic moment from Hall of Fame football coach Lou Holtz. Of course, we would love to get in contact with you. If you would like to connect with us, find us on Facebook at DFWFCA. You can find us on Twitter at FCA DFW, and our website is dfwfca.org. This is the DFW Fellowship of Christian Athletes weekly radio show, Faith in Sports, brought to you by the Jim Sunberg Golf Classic at the Trophy Club Country Club. Tom Grieve, Pudge Rodriguez, and Mark McLemore all scheduled to be there. In 1966, Coach Tom Landry had the inspiration to start the Fellowship of Christian Athletes in Dallas. This year, Dallas-Fort Worth FCA is celebrating God's amazing impact on coaches and athletes during our 50th anniversary. Over 16,000 students and athletes are involved with FCA in North Texas. Nearly 500 coaches and teachers volunteer their time to influence student-athletes. Visit dfwfca.org for more information, including how you can pick up some one-of-a-kind 50th anniversary products like caps, shirts, coffee mugs, and more. Situated on 330 acres of beautiful natural landscape with facilities to accommodate groups up to 1,000, Lakeview Camp and Retreat Center is the ideal place to schedule your next event. Whatever your group's goals are, Lakeview aims to meet your needs, providing year-round service facilities for retreats, conferences, camps, corporate meetings, outdoor education outings, school events, and family gatherings. Our friendly staff is committed to making your stay a great experience. Come to Lakeview Camp and Retreat Center and enjoy state-of-the-art facilities, activities that engage and rejuvenate, comfortable lodging, and great food in a setting that inspires the awe of the greatness of God. To learn more about this scenic location for your next event, visit us online today. For more information, visit lakeviewcamp.net. I'm Chris Schneider. Welcome back to DFWFCA's Faith in Sports, brought to you by the Jim Sunberg Golf Classic. Sonny will be joined by fellow Ranger greats Pudge Rodriguez, Tom Grieve, and Mark McLemore this year. Go to dfwfca.org for all the details. 
Now, we'll continue our conversation with TCU baseball coach Jim Slosnagel in just a moment. Lou Holtz will provide us with a DFWFCA 50th anniversary classic moment. And we will also hear from DFWFCA's camp director, Danny Noah. DFWFCA celebrating 50 years of ministry, and we are asking you to help commemorate this milestone with us. We'd like to hear your FCA story. How did FCA affect you when you were growing up, maybe in middle school or high school or college? Let's hear your FCA story, and uh, you will be entered into a monthly drawing to receive some great FCA gear. Go to dfwfca.org for all the details. Our special guest here on Faith and Sports today is Jim Schlossnagel, the coach who has led TCU into the college baseball elite the last few years going to four College World Series in six seasons. In fact, that's where he is this weekend there in Omaha. Now, Coach, I've covered you the last few years there at the College World Series, and you always seem so calm over there in the dugout, even in the most tense of times. How do you stay so calm? <laughs> that's something I've had to work on, believe me. It's, uh, it's something you have to practice uh, because inside, you know, you're pulling your hair out. And I definitely have my moments. You definitely talk to the players. You know, I have my moments where I do lose control, and that's something that I'm constantly working on uh, and praying about for sure. Uh, but, you know, the, the one thing I've learned is that practices belong to, you know, to the coaching staff. I, I firmly believe that, and the games belong to the players. And I, as best, you know, we're, certainly during the games, we're going to manage the game, meaning decide when we steal or hit and run or pinch hit or, or take the pitcher out. But we don't have any control over that, which is a lot, a lot like life. You have to learn the things you can control and the things you can't and we all try to control too much so I've, I've learned that and just tried to uh, sit over there and watch maybe eat an apple every now and then. <laughs> you are a, uh, a believer in Christ you make no bones about it you talk about it it's out there how did you come to a relationship with the Lord uh, well you know just like most people I mean uh, uh, where I'm from you know I, I grew up in a very strong Christian home both parents uh, strong Christians I was at grew up in church every you know Sunday morning Sunday night and went Wednesday evening, I was I was there and went through some tough times as about a nine or ten year old. My parents got divorced and and that that was a challenge. And and as far as I can remember, in that during that time is when I uh, officially you know asked the Lord into my heart and and became a full blooded Christian for sure and kind of moved on from there. How do you maintain a, a daily spiritual walk? Uh, you know, I have my quiet time in the morning. I have a very uh, good uh, group of uh, I don't know, I guess. Uh, you know, good friends uh, that are Christians. We, you know, we, we're in a Bible study about once every once, a, sometimes once a week, depending on the time of year. Sometimes once every two weeks. And uh, you know, we, I'm very, you know, I'm, I'm involved in the FCA here at, at TCU. We have uh, team chapel every uh, Wednesday or Thursday. You know, you, basically the day before we play a weekend series. But but mainly it's a personal thing and just you know something that that I try and have daily time in prayer and scripture, uh, whether it be in the morning, usually, or sometimes in the in the late evening. Do you have any uh, favorite Bible scriptures that you tend to uh, go back and lean on? Uh, just you know, one, basically, is uh, James 4, 8, and that's, uh, you know, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. And, and I just, I think that applies to a lot of things for me. Uh, when I've struggled is when I've, I've been further away from where I should be and and normally, when my heart and, and mind and spiritual walk is is right, it doesn't guarantee anything. But certainly, uh, you know, things seem to be a little bit better, uh, or at least I can deal with the, the negative things uh, better. So that's written on my hat. It's written on every uh, some part of every lineup card I've I've written for a long time, and it just keeps me re- reminded. Is it, uh, is it is it something the players see in you? Do you think? Um, you know, how do you handle your uh, your spiritual walk when you deal with your kids? You know, I, I would like to think they see it. I mean, I, I mean, I have warts like everybody else, and there are times, especially during the heat of a game, where I may say th- say something or do something that I, that isn't Christian-like, or you know, uh, in two hours when the game after the game's over, I'm disappointed that that happened. But I, I think it's more in my personal one-on-one relationships with those guys, how they see me interact with my children, how they see me interact with our family. You know, uh, for in one of our rules, for instance, is you know, on Sundays. We we don't normally practice on Sundays. There are times we have to, but they know at any time they are more than, uh, if they're late to practice because of uh, they went to church, no one's going to say, I encourage them to go as long as, long, as long as I know they're going, as long as they're going to the earliest service. You, know, <laughs> you don't get to show up late if you go to the 1115 service because you want to sleep a little bit more. 
you got to go to the 830. But, uh, but yeah, just different things that way. And, you know, I, uh, not that I'm afraid to, to be outward in my walk, but um, I think there's a fine line, um, even at a place like TCU, to where you have to, you know, let people live their own lives and witness uh, in, in different ways and, and when you see opportunities. And we have several very, very strong Christian players on the team. And some of the best days are when you see those guys lead guys who came to TCU without any kind of faith. And you see them. You know, we have two or three kids on the team that have been saved in the last year, and and those are awesome days. We we know that's for a, even more. It's for eternity versus uh, having a great season. So those those are exciting days when that happens. That is TCU baseball coach Jim Schlossnagel. Thank you, sir, and blessings to you there in Omaha. Good luck. We will uh, look forward to having you on the show again soon. Coming up next, we will hear from the DFWFCA camp director, Danny Noah. Find out what's been going on with FCA camps. Lou Holtz will be joining us as well with our 50th anniversary classic moment. Now, you can look great and help support DFWFCA at the same time. Check out our 50th anniversary gear. I mean, some incredible stuff. Great clothes, uh, golf shirts, hats, gifts. Check it out at dfwfca.org. Look for the FCA store. This is the DFW Fellowship of Christian Athletes weekly radio show, Faith in Sports, brought to you by the Jim Sunberg Golf Classic at the Trophy Club Country Club. Go to dfwfca.org for all the details. Heads up, all coaches. The Fellowship of Christian Athletes has something special coming up just for you. FCA knows better than anyone how hard you work. We know coaches need to be able to get away and be refreshed and inspired. The FCA Coaches Enrichment Camp 2016 will be July 7th through the 10th at an amazing lake resort and spa. It is open to all Texas coaches, married or single. Many of the greatest coaches of all time have taken advantage of FCA Coaches Camps to be refreshed and renewed. Guys like Lou Holtz, Bobby Bowden, Tom Osborne, Gene Stallings, Grant Taff, and John Wooden, just to name a few. If it was good for them, it'll be good for you, too. Go to dfwfca.org for all the details, and we hope to see you there, Coach. Kansas City Royals pitcher Brian Bannister. One of the great things about FCA for me in high school was just the fact that we got God on campus. Just the ability to uh, not only associate it with sports, just, but just to uh, get people into the classroom and, and to share God's Word. We started it on campus uh, my sophomore year, and by our senior year it had grown exponentially. It was one of the few opportunities we got on a regular basis to share God's Word with our student body. The Fellowship of Christian Athletes at fca.org. I'm Chris Schneider. Welcome back to DFWFCA's Faith in Sports, brought to you by the JSGC, the Jim Sunberg Golf Classic. We'd love to have you join us. Go to dfwfca.org for all the details. Lou Holtz will be joining us for the DFWFCA 50th Anniversary Classic moment in just a couple of minutes. And speaking of greats, here's something you want to write down on the calendar. Join us for the DFWFCA 50th Anniversary Celebration Dinner. Roger Staubach, Bob Lilly, Dan Reeves, Bob Brunick, they'll all be there to share cowboy stories. Go to dfwfca.org for all the information on early bird tickets. You do not want to miss this. Joining us here on Faith in Sports now is the DFWFCA Southeast Area Representative and the Camp Director for DFWFCA, Danny Noah. Hey, Danny, thank you for being here. Now, you've been a pretty busy guy so far this year with the weekend of Champions Middle School Camp, the Sports Leadership High School Camp. You just finished up with a very productive DISD camp. How are you able to put all of these camps together? Boy, you've you've asked a great question there. Uh, great team. Of, of volunteers uh, for our middle school sports camp. We work directly with each and every middle school coordinator in the district as far as the promotional aspect. Uh, there's a lot of camps going on. There's a lot of people doing camps, and we fortunately have an in-house marketing dynamic, and that being our relationship with the schools. So we, we're not going out and promoting. We're promoting from within. Those co- coaches help us uh, get the word to their students. It's beneficial to their middle school athletes. As as we learn this year, as we learn every year, very raw in their talents, very raw in their abilities, uh, but just to give them some, some basic fundamentals they can use uh, is incredible. But it's, it's a great team effort. Coaches, uh, our staff, our volunteers, people from our board, uh, people that have been part of the camp uh, help make it happen. The sponsors who help sponsor every kid to attend 
Uh, we, we don't charge. Uh, we provide transportation. So it's a, it's a team effort to put that on. So we hear about the weekend of Champions Camp, and we hear about the Sports Leadership Camp, but you're telling me there's uh, a lot of other camps going on too. Now, are these FCA camps, or, or is it a partnership between you and the schools? How does that work? I would say partnership is, is a great word. Uh, the Dallas camp originally started as a, uh, a Dallas ISD camp. They wanted to do something specific to middle school athletes, so they started with a football camp. We started throwing out some ideas of how we could grow it. Uh, we just served. We, we would get some donations for food, uh, some Bibles, some different things. And then we were running up against a few UIL limitations as far as transportation. And they threw it back and they said, but if you put your name on it, that changes. And so we said, we'll do that, which allowed us to be a little bit more uh, forthcoming with sharing the gospel, being more specific of who was working the camp, and then just bringing in a whole another dynamic of, uh, of the former DISD athlete that now has made it on the NFL level coming to give back and so that's that has just been a great opportunity for us a few years ago we added girls basketball which I really feel is the greatest opportunity for growth there there's not a lot of people doing a specific middle school basketball camp for girls uh, that age and so next year we hope to either add baseball or golf which is a dying sports dying sports in the in the Dallas ISD area but we have some people who are very passionate and hope to again add those in the coming years you just had a uh, DISD camp that uh, had to, how did that go what was that all about oh man we had an incredible uh, time there we said with our team it, it was scary smooth uh, we kept thinking there was something that we were forgetting to do but the last day for the first time we actually presented the gospel with an opportunity to respond and had uh, close to 50 students uh, right there at the 50 yard line of Sprague Stadium uh, give their hearts to Jesus Christ, able to put some information in their hands of how to walk with Christ, uh, how to live for him, and, and stay connected with FCA. That was exciting to close out the camp with that, uh, to see the kids stand up and stand right there in the middle of the, of the football field and make a decision to serve Jesus Christ. Making converts is amazing, you know, introducing kids to, to Jesus. And the Bible says uh, to make disciples, too. So how does FCA go about helping these new converts, these kids, once they do come in contact with Jesus? You know, that's a great question. And, and, and our answer for that question is the local FCA huddle, plugging these students in to what's happening on their campuses and even casting vision that day after they've prayed that prayer. If you don't have an FCA on your campus, you need to go to your middle school coordinator and say, why don't we have FCA? And fortunately, we have the relationship right up at the top with the athletic departments. They're supportive of FCA. They love FCA. And so that is, we have the support of the district basically to help us disciple the students in the district, the student athletes. And so that is a win for us to have that in place. And so that's what the FCA huddle does. They serve as that discipleship opportunity. So if the Holy Spirit is talking to, to somebody right now about volunteering to help you at, at camps or coaching at some of these camps or helping in any way if they want to get involved with FCA and huddles or camps, uh, how do they contact you? How do they go about finding out if they can help the ministry? First, I would encourage them to just go to our website at DFW fca.org and just see uh, get a snapshot of what's happening locally but then uh, I would love for them to reach out to me my my email address is d noah d n o a h at fca.org love for them to shoot me an email just tell me are they are you a parent are you a coach are you involved in community sports you know we're we're just trying to use this vehicle of sport to use an opportunity to to preach Christ uh, whether it's ministering to a coach or ministering through a coach, whether it's impacting an athlete. We want to engage people because we can't do it by ourselves. We, there's people out there that are looking for a place that have a background in sports, uh, that have a story to tell, and we definitely want to engage them. We'd love to have them on the team in some form or fashion. DFWFCA Camp Director Danny Noah. Thank you, Danny, for your amazing ministry that's touched so many lives. It is time for the DFWFCA 50th Anniversary Classic Moment, provided this week by a man who has entertained us for years, one of the greatest college football coaches of all time, and then as an analyst on ESPN. He's the great Lou Holtz. I, I, I think that you, you just have to have a daily walk with the Lord. I think you've got to be able to find time to sit down and thank the good Lord and listen to him or what you're willing to go. And I think if you read the Bible, it, it would tell you exactly how to live, etc. Uh, my wife and I go to church every single Sunday. 
we go to breakfast after that. I, I just think God has been a very important part in our life, and the most important thing is become a very important part in our children's life as well. We have four children. They're all married. They have nine grandchildren. They're all involved in their church or community, their school. Uh, there's never been a marital problem, a financial problem, a drug problem, an employment problem, or an alcohol problem. And uh, that's because the one thing that we always did, no matter how busy I was, no matter what school I coached, that we always found time to go to church together on Sunday and go to breakfast. And uh, you're only as happy as your saddest child. And uh, as I say, the other thing you take with you to heaven are your children. And I think my wife has uh, been the mainstay of our uh, our religious life. I mean, she is just a great example. You mentioned uh, being able to read the Bible regularly. Are there any scriptures that, that are important to you that you tend to uh, fall back on a lot? Well, there, there are many scriptures, but I remember when I coached at Notre Dame, uh, the very first game I coached, they had a big sign on the sign at Dillon Hall. Now, they only allowed one dorm to put uh, signs up, but they had a sheet that covered the whole side of the building that said, John 3.16, Lou 12-0. And I thought, well, that's a little bit awkward, but <laughs> my favorite one is uh, Proverbs 3, five. Uh, put all your faith and trust in God, and he'll direct your ways. That's it. College Football Hall of Fame coach Lou Holtz with this week's DFWFCA 50th Anniversary Classic Moment. Thank you, Coach. Now, if the Lord is leading you to be a part of us, the DFWFCA team, we would love to have you join us. Whether you're a parent, a business leader, a church leader, school administrator, a coach, teacher, anyone who might be interested in making a difference in your community, we offer many opportunities to serve. Go to dfwfca.org for all the details. We would love to have you on the team. Coming up next, we will tell you who the special guest is going to be joining us here on the show next week. We will also tell you who will provide the DFWFCA 50th Anniversary Classic Moment. This is DFWFCA's Faith in Sports, brought to you by the Jim Sundberg Golf Classic at the Trophy Club Country Club. Did you know that after a trip to an FCA sports camp in Estes Park, Colorado in 1962, Dallas Cowboys coach Tom Landry felt inspired to use his position as a coach to influence young student-athletes. So in 1966, 50 years ago, Coach Landry helped launch the Fellowship of Christian Athletes in Dallas. Hi, I'm Rick Bowles, North Texas Director for the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and I'd like to ask you to tell us your FCA story. What impact did FCA have or is currently having on your life? Visit dfwfca.org for more information. Her goal? To shoot par. Our goal? To keep her on course. While she prepares for her shot, we prepare her for life. By helping her pursue honorable ambitions, she will stay on course. Join the Fellowship of Christian Athletes as we strive to put the heart and soul in sports by impacting the world for Jesus Christ. To learn more, contact us at fca.org. That's fca.org. I'm Chris Schneider. Thank you for joining us for DFWFCA's Faith in Sports radio show brought to you by the Jim Sunberg Golf Classic. Our thanks to our special guest today, TCU coach Jim Schlossnagel, and of course, Lou Holtz with a classic moment. I'm Chris Schneider, the sports and spirit speaker. You can find me at RadioactiveSpeaking.com. Godly messages with stories from the greatest coaches and athletes of all time. Find me, the sports and spirit speaker, at RadioactiveSpeaking.com. Our special guest on next week's show is recently retired from the NFL, former Dallas Cowboy receiver Jesse Holly. He also played with Tom Brady and the Patriots. The classic moment next week will be provided by a local Olympian, former McKinney High, UNT, and NFL player Johnny Quinn, now a member of the U.S. Olympic bobsled team. Guests scheduled to join us in future weeks include Tony Dungy, Tom Osborne, Roger Staubach, Dan Reeves, Mike Singletary, and many others. FCA's Faith in Sports is an outreach of the DFW Fellowship of Christian Athletes, hosted and produced by me, Chris Schneider. Executive producer is Rick Bowles. For information on DFWFCA, contact Rick at rbowles, B-O-W-L-E-S, rbowles, at fca.org. And remember this week to do all that you do unto the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you from the DFW Fellowship of Christian Athletes, Faith in Sports.